we thank you ma'am for your suggestions and concern uh, regarding nutrition and health in india we will surely take the suggestions up i now call upon stage our chief guest for the day dr mohan rao director of uh, ccmb to address the gathering and enlighten us with his valuable words dignitaries on the dais and my dear friends on the dais sitting here we are not able to hear very well the audio is not very clear i hope you are able to hear and understand uh, clearly i'm very impressed and very happy to be here for the program which is organized by students and for the students it's very nice experience to see that the graduates undergraduate students of this in college started this program and going on very well going into the fifth year of uh, of the activity i congratulate all the students who have planned planned this activity and very meticulously executing this from the beginning i am watching the meticulousness and the enthusiasm in this program i was also very thoroughly impressed by the dance program that was performed by one of our student uh is the student available here can she come on to the dais please the dance and the medicine professions both of them are extremely demanding careers having achieved success in both areas is not joke she must be really struggling hard to achieve this at the same time i also congratulate all the students who have really taken care of this program extremely well it's very important to have science as one of our major part of our life the science and science alone is a major cause of social transformation if you look back 1000 years ago 10000 years ago how the man lived and how the man is living today what is the difference what caused this difference there is no other factor other than science that caused the difference science is very very critical and important it's good that you people are doing this program to improve your knowledge and expand into the different areas i come from a doctor's family my father was a medical doctor because of that i know very closely how the doctor's family is demanding how the doctor's profession is is demanding treating the ill is a most profound and very respectable job at this profession i used to see with my father the gratitude of the patients and the respect he commanded uh, when uh, when he was practicing india is of course great country as i'm sure you must have read and talked about several times about the first surgery in the done in the world the entire world the first surgery was done in india by sushruta he has done the rhinoplasty 2600 years ago not now 2600 years ago sushruta did the rhinoplasty also done extra capsular cataract extraction okay that was done by these people very very long ago of course those days medicine must be empirical in the sense you try something if it works good keep it if it doesn't work drop it so it's empirical by experience but later on medicine changed its direction so now we became more rational we want to understand the principle beyond its functioning and to control the processes that has become a rational medicine today we have evidence based medicine we need a rational for starting the drugs and we need proper evidence for its functionality and all histological histopathological information before we can administer the drug medicine has become much more scientific <coughs> than what it was understanding discovery validation all parts of a massive scientific uh, activity in order to achieve a great success in medical field you need to have science with it 
clinician scientists are very important. Scientists will be going in deeper and deeper into molecular, cellular aspects of it. Sometimes they may go so much away from the main disease part of it. But the clinicians are with the patient. They know every day, day-to-day -day sufferings. They are very close to the disease. We need to link the scientists and the clinicians. In the many other countries in the world, there's a concept called clinician scientists. But that is rather poor in our country. So I urge all the medical students here, keep your science alive. Not only delivery of knowledge, since science creates knowledge, it can be delivered through various ways. Okay? The medical profession delivers knowledge to the patients or the needy. In addition to delivering knowledge, you should also be part in creating knowledge. That's very, very important. I think you will be able to do that. At this juncture, I would like to touch upon a couple of cases where uh, I have my own first-hand experience. As a, I'm, a, I'm a basic scientist, okay. but we interact with many clinicians. For example, LV Prasad Eye Institute, we collaborate with them, with the limbal cell transplantation that you must have heard on the newspapers. We also collaborate with uh, uh, Asian Institute of Gastroenterology. Several issues are there. Let me cite one example how a medical doctor and a scientist can work together. There was a patient some time ago, several years ago, about 25 years old lady. She went to the hospital for some difficulty with the eye. And they found out that she is suffering from cataract, annular cataract. You don't expect a cataract for a 25 year old lady. 25 year old lady is a very young to be uh, having cataract. So the doctor there, instead of normally treating, had a doubt that it may be something to do with the genetics. So he asked uh, another colleague to just find out what can be done. Then they called the, uh, her mother and mother's mother and her daughter and some of them were uh, available. And it was understood that the mother's mother actually was blind. After 25-30 years she became blind. And her mother also became blind but was treated cataract surgery was there and she started this problem and one brother of her also had a problem but he refused to uh, accept that he has any problem because he's very young and he didn't think that he has any problem when he was investigated he also had a starting of annular cataract obviously this is has some genetic basis so we collected the samples of the blood and we looked at the mutations and we identified there is a mutation called g98 or when we say that 98 position at that portion, instead of uh, arginine, there is some other amino acid. Okay. That's a mutation that was found. This mutation causes disease. We, we understand that now. So it's very interesting. A medical practitioner's observation led to a scientific finding which is very critical. Not only that, we did a lot of experiments with that. It also turns out, person who has this mutation always may not get cataract. They may get cataract a little later in the age, but not congenital. Not congenital cataract, not serial cataract, but it's a pre-senile cataract. Now, if the person smokes, this, this uh, disease will come much faster, much earlier. That is because the smoke, cigarette smoke and BD smokes have cadmium in it. Cadmium is antagonistic this molecule. This causes cataract earlier. So it was possible to do all these things just because one doctor made an observation. So it is important that the doctors keep an observing eye and analyze the facts and interact with other scientists so that we'll be able to solve, solve problems. Similarly, we are working with the KRAS and BRAF for in, the, in the case of uh, colorectal cancer. And we also develop, developing a photodynamic therapy. I don't want to go into details of these things. We also have big diabetes cohort, which we're working on it. So there are many things which, which we can do together. Modern science is altering medical profession. The way we treat patients is completely getting altered. For example, gene therapy. Gene therapy is now becoming very, very interesting. If a gene is not working well, for example, insulin, if you don't have insulin, your gene is defective, one can give insulin from outside as injection or make, can put a right gene in the person's place where pancreatic place, make insulin inside the body. So gene therapy should be possible. But for, for that to happen, we need lots of knowledge to be generated further. There was an idea, one gene, 
one protein and one gene defect, one protein defect, one disease. That is now, now gone. Today we see the polygenic disease. Most of the diseases have multi-genes composition. The process is becoming more and more complex. And also, each gene can produce more proteins by what we call alternate splicing. Alternate can produce more proteins. So this very complex structure that is develop developing. But in order to succeed in anything, primary requirement is to sequence the DNA. If you sequence the DNA, mutation can be found and you will be able to solve the problem. When a patient goes to a doctor, you will measure temperature, blood pressure, maybe pulse, maybe other few things and diagnose by x-rays, whatever ever. Tomorrow, maybe we will also do DNA analysis. When a patient comes, take a drop of blood, look for his DNA and see what possible diseases he can get. Can we relate the disease to the gene and treat him correctly? One more reason why we, we, want, we want to do that is that one medicine doesn't work for everybody. What we call pharmacogenomic approach. For example, if you get headache, some people take aspirin, some people take something else, paracetamol. Why do they take differently? Why there's a preference? Cancer drugs, in one case they work, in one other case they don't work. We know about the breast cancer situation where you see the mutation. So drugs can work for certain gene profiles, they will not work for certain other gene profiles. You can identify which drug can be given if you know the sequence, if you know the analysis of it. So that is very, very nice thing to do. But how do we do this? I'm sure you remember, human genome was sequenced by seven countries together, working for three years and spending billions of dollars. If that's the case, we are not going to see each patient's DNA sequence. It's not going to be working possible. But today, technology improved so much, so much that we can sequence human genome in six days. Not six, not three years, in six days we can sequence. So since six days is not too long a time. But today, technology further advanced and there's something called nanopore technology. With the nanopore technology, it may be possible that we can sequence DNA in one hour time. And if the Japanese technology goes together, if you make parallel these things, it may be possible to sequence human genome in 15 days, 15 minutes time. In 15 minutes time, if human genome can be sequenced, you will be able to solve large number of problems. So this is likely to happen. And one more interesting point that's emerging is nanomedicine. Nanomedicine, nanotechnology based medicine, will deliver drug at the place where it is necessary. See, when you take a cancer drug, it kills every dividing cell. Because it's killing every dividing cell, you lose hair, you lose intestinal lining, you have so many side effects. If you can kill only tumor and leave the rest of the body, it will be very nice. In order to do that, you must have a targeted drug delivery. The nanotechnology can hold the drug, take it there and deliver. So this will be fantastic development that is likely to happen. It's already happening, but it is likely to happen soon. It is also possible that one can build nanostructures which should, can do nanosurgery. In the sense, if you have blood clot in the heart or in the brain, instead of opening the part, you inject nanorobots. Nanorobot systems can go there, wherever the clot is there, they can rotate, clean the place and be digested off afterwards. So it is a possibility of you can make a minor small surgeon and put him inside the body to treat the diseases. The technology is developing so much that we may see totally new, new area of, of uh, medical field. And stem cells. Now stem cells are becoming very, very useful. We are able to repair the body and if maybe in future we may make even organs in the test tube or, and replace the organs. So if, is it possible? I am sure it is possible. I am sure you heard something about 3D printing. You can make a 3D printing device, on it we can grow the cells. It may be possible sooner or later to make an organ itself in the laboratory. So if there is a heart problem, yesterday in the news we might have seen uh, from Bangalore to Chennai, the heart was transplanted by a lot of difficulty. I was so transported. Maybe it is possible to make a heart outside. So these possibilities exist. All these opportunities are open for you people who are just entering the area. We people have done whatever, we have contributed whatever we could. And we have, I have maybe 10 more years, 15 more years to contribute. But afterwards, it is yours, uh, yours to take up. There are many, many beautiful things uh, one can do with the stem cell biology. 
it is also possible just uh, just i was sitting here dr kalpakam was talking to me can we make a small organs like this which can be used for testing purpose instead of using uh, animals or humans can we use a testing purpose yes it should be possible something called organ on chip so we can develop a chip on which organs can be developed so that is a possibility we developed a chip dna based diagnostic chip for eye infections so it should be possible to do that epigenetics is another area where fantastic developments are taking place we can keep on going like that but recently one very interesting thing i noticed uh, uh, in may issue of nature medicine this uh, may issue of nature medicine there is an article which talks about how young blood can change and correct the diseases of the old it's beautiful idea what they did they took two animals one is a very old animal which is suffering from brain disorders con uh, cognitive disorders and neuronal degeneration problems that animal circulation system by surgery connected to a young animal so young animal circulation system is taking care of both the circulation systems after some time the neuronal plasticity improved all the neural degeneration reversed it means young blood into the old person would be able to correct few things now can we take a plasma of a young person and inject into the person who suffer from alzheimer's disease can we treat him we don't know this appeared in may issue of this month two months ago so there are there are open open opportunities so there is a fantastic things that can do that can be done using our scientific knowledge and creative thinking and desire to help desire to help the mankind that is very very important i would like to close this uh, my presentation my talk by just mentioning one point which i am always concerned about is ethics in medical profession when my father was medical doctor when he was treating patients he was a hero in the town he was the most important person everybody respected him not only for medical treatment for any advice also they come to him he is treated as a most trustworthy good person is that the case today it is not the case today medical doctors are not trusted by the patients medical people have to go to couple of doctors to before finding out is that true or not and also many corporate hospitals are actually misleading the patients and conducting tests which are not necessary all these things are happening so as a medical professionals professionals i think it's very important for you to bring back your dignity and honesty and respect you must your purpose is to treat the people and help the people and that must be kept in mind you should never be lost sight of i trust that mahatma gandhi statement is very important here mahatma gandhi said whenever you need to make a decision please think if the decision is going to be going to help the poorest of the poor if you do you will be able to do achieve something peaceful and good our mission should be to wipe every tear from every poor and poor man and woman in the country so you do your best and we let's all work together medical profession scientific profession and solve human sufferings i also offer to any students here i was told that you have a icm or fellowship to carry out two months program things like that if you want to do such programs at ccmb you can write to us we will be able to help you accommodate those programs and i wish you best for this osmecon 2014 thank you words on the lines that you have suggested we will continue to have a scientific outlook in our practice we will surely try to scale new heights in the directions you have pointed out to us thank you sir